This enormous tornado is more than a kilometer wide. It's one of 60 tornadoes that ripped through Mississippi. At least a dozen people are dead. Hundreds of homes are severely damaged, many outright flattened. Reed Timmer was in the middle of the storm. He's with Discovery Channel's Storm Chasers and joins me now from Yazoo City, Mississippi. So, Reed, uh, thanks for joining us today. The destruction there looks horrific. What was it like and what's it like now? Well, the damage, this is some of the worst damage I've ever seen storm chasing. And this right here, this is a church. And uh, this is actually where some of the EF4 rating came from. You can see concrete slabs that were ripped out of the ground, steel poles that were bent down, and even extending beyond the trees, uh, beyond this building, you can see trees that are snapped, just like a lawnmower went over a, a lawn or something. Now, you do this a lot, and we have this pretty amazing video of you chasing this tornado. What was it like being in the middle of this thing? Well, the storm was actually moving at about 60 miles an hour, so we had to get well in front of it. And then we just saw this monster wedge appear on the horizon. And in a matter of minutes, it was right on top of us. We were probably a mile or two away, and we tracked the tornado eastward. And we were in the rear inflow jet of the tornado, and it was gusting probably 80, 90 miles per hour and bent signs to the ground. And then we were the first people on the scene to the damage here in Yazoo City and just saw a horrific sight. Uh, we went house to house, pulling people out of the rubble, and uh, thankfully we had our medic here to give people immediate medical attention as soon as we found them. So we think of tornadoes as being this narrow funnel, but this one was really quite wide. Have you ever seen anything like it before? Well, back on uh, May 3rd, 1999, when I first started storm chasing, I was chasing an F5 tornado uh, just west of Oklahoma City, and that one was a mile wide, and this tornado was real similar in structure to that one. Uh, this is a wedge tornado, which means it's wider than it is tall, and you could tell it was really violent because it had this rapidly rising motion on the back side of it. So we knew that there were many communities in the path of the storm that, that were in big trouble. And is it just as ferocious to be inside this thing as it is to be in the path of it? Yeah, when you're right in the outer circulation, I mean, the wind is so strong. It's vibrating our vehicle. Uh, I mean, it, it just feels really intense. It's one of the most powerful natural forces on the planet, and being up that close is, is really humbling. And we've got a vehicle that looks like a tank. It has bulletproof armor, and it's designed to drive into some of the strongest tornadoes out there. And this one, if we were right in the center of it, likely would have rolled the vehicle. And the vehicle, is that well protected that you can drive through these tornadoes? The vehicle is uh, designed to drive into tornadoes. It's shaped aerodynamically, so there's always a downward directed force. And our goal is to drive inside these tornadoes and record data within the circulation. Wow. Uh, we can handle winds of probably up to about 180 miles per hour, but a huge wedge tornado like this, that's an EF4, I mean, this one probably would have rolled us if we got inside the heart of that tornado. So we had to stay just right on the outside of the circulation. Okay, so what are you able to learn by getting so close? What's the science here? Well, our goal is to use a radar that's mounted on the back of our vehicle and to measure the wind right at the ground because when you're far away, you can only measure wind that's above the ground with standard radar and, and the larger mobile radars. So our goal is to get right up close and to measure those winds right at the ground. And that's really important because those, those are the winds that cause damage like you see here behind me. Can you then help people by telling them that uh, these tornadoes are on the way? Is that the idea? Well, there's two ways that we help people in the path of these storms. First of all, we relay reports underneath the storm to the National Weather Service. For example, this one, 20 miles west of, of Yazoo City, we called the report into emergency managers. That helps them know what's coming so they can sound the sirens. And the people here actually had about 40 minutes of lead time for the warning, which is huge. And our science and our research, we're collecting data right at the ground. And this helps better understand the wind circulation within tornadoes. Because if you could better understand the true winds that are found inside, that you could better engineer structures in the path of these storms. We're seeing a lot of climate changes now. Are you noticing anything different about where and when these tornadoes are touching down? Well, there's an El Nino condition in the Pacific right now, which is strengthening the jet stream along the southern U.S., and that's likely partly responsible for these storm systems that are just roaring across southern Tornado Alley and across the Gulf Coast states, which we call Dixie Alley. And um, given global warming, uh, it's theorized that you could have stronger and more frequent El Nino events, which would be more of these southern stream jet streams being really strong. And if that occurs, you're going to get more tornadoes across the southern U.S. and across Dixie Alley. Okay, so that's the southern United States. Are there any parts of Canada that might be at greater risk? Well, the last time I storm chased in Canada was in 2007, and we saw a half-mile wide wedge tornado in Manitoba. And uh, that was a similar uh, sea surface temperature pattern in the Pacific. And so I wouldn't be surprised if later on this summer, late June into July, you're going to have greater moisture transported to the Canadian prairie. So it could even be more active uh, in terms of tornadoes there this summer. Wow, well, we'll watch for it. Now, 
You follow these storms, you chase tornadoes. Give us the last word on what the storm season is going to be like this year, just how bad. Well, it's been active up to this point. I would say since the El Nino is sustaining in the Pacific that um, this uh, action will continue likely through the rest of the spring and possibly into the summer uh, before the El Nino event subsides. I think it's going to be a really active tornado season this year. Okay, Reed, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll be watching for a lot more of your video. All right, thanks for having me. Reed Timmer is with Discovery Channel's Storm Chasers. He joined me from Yazoo City, Mississippi.